Limitless. This is the Hoka you're looking for. 37 millimeters of cushion in the heel, 33 in the back and what in the front, I'm sorry. As far as what's the weight, well Hoka's gonna quote that just over 10 ounces. And uh, 12 and a half in this shoe weighs 13.9 ounces on our scales. This is a low drop, comfort cushioned, road running shoe from Hoka 1-1. Hi there, this is Nathan Lehman. I'm at the Ultra Running Company in Myers Park and uh, we're here for another shoe review. Our shoe review today is the Hoka 1-1 Bondi 5. Maybe Hoka One One Bondi 5? Depends on how their marketing department's feeling today. We're not sure. We, you know, back in the day it was Hoka One One, then they never said it was Hoka One One. So it's Hoka 1-1, now I hear them saying Hoka One One again, regardless. This is the Hoka you're looking for. When you think Hoka and you think a lot of cushion, you're gonna think about the Bondi. In this case, the Bondi 5, the fifth generation of uh, really their number one selling shoe over that, over that time period. So let's get right into it. The Hoka, as far as Ultra Running Company's categorization, the Hoka uh, Bondi 5 is a road shoe. Uh, you can see that really when you look at the tread here, you're really looking at a nice smooth tread. They've, uh, they've kind of increased the, the hard wearing rubber portions of it, decreased some of the soft wearing. And compared to Bondi's in the past, um, they've really uh, really touched up with some of the wear patterns. And we'll talk about that later. This is uh, the, the Bondi 5 measures in at 37 and 33 millimeters. So 37 millimeters of cushion in the heel, 33 in the back and what in the front, I'm sorry. And what that means is this is what we call a comfort cushion shoe. In fact, this defines the comfort cushion shoe for us. It's also a low drop shoe. So uh, between that, that kind of three and six millimeter area. So uh, this is a low drop comfort cushioned road running shoe from Hoka 1-1, the Bondi 5. So now let's get right into it. So listen, the first thing you're gonna see with any with any Bondi is that regardless of where, what position it's in, whether it's a speedy shoe, a long distance shoe, a comfort shoe, a training shoe, it's gonna have about half again as much cushion as any other shoe on the market. That's their goal. Uh, certainly half again as much more as the standard in the market. So at 37 millimeters, this is about as much cushion as we're gonna get. This is a compressed rubber uh, shoe, which means basically there are three ways that you can get shoe in uh, rubber into a shoe. Underneath your foot, you can compress it. So take a big piece of rubber and push it right down and carve it out. You can pour, uh, pour rubber into a mold and that's called injection molded. Or you can use uh, uh, TPU, which is kind of the most recent technology on that. Um, what Hoke has chosen to go with on the Bondi 5, as they have with all their previous Bondis, is a compressed rubber midsole. So what you're gonna get in this is a very lightweight shoe for the, for the amount of cushion that it has. Um, as far as what's the weight, well Hoke is gonna quote that just over 10 ounces. Unfortunately, Hoka, as every other manufacturer in the country, typically um, weighs their shoes in a men's size nine. And men's size nine is not a big portion of our sales here at the Ultra Running Company. This one represents kind of the other end of the spectrum, a 12 and a half. And uh, 12 and a half in this shoe weighs 13.9 ounces on our scales. That's not a light shoe. So uh, basically, if you wanna go out and, and run a, a sprint or a 5K, you're gonna be carrying around a lot of extra weight uh, with the Bondi 5 versus, versus a shoe that's probably a little bit better for that application. What we like this shoe a lot for is when you're going uh, what I'd call over distance. And over distance could be a three or a four or five mile run on a, on a Friday when you've been working out all week and your legs are just tired. Uh, it could be a, a, your long run if you're training for a marathon. It could be your daily run if, you're, if you have high mileage weeks. But basically what this shoe is designed to do is to protect you from the impact of the ground versus um, giving you that speed and, and, and agility. This is a very, very wide shoe, which we love. Uh, the wider the shoe, the more your weight is gonna disperse across the tread. Basically more square inches of weight means uh, less shock on any one of those square inches. So what Hoka does really well with all of their shoes, not just the Bondi, is they create kind of a bucket seat. So when you're looking at this, uh, at this 37 millimeters, that probably only goes to about here. The rest is both cosmetic to make it, it look a little bit nicer, as well as creating a kind of a, a bucket effect where your foot sits down inside that. Now what that gives you is a really 
stable, consistent landing in the shoe. Uh, one of the challenges before Hoka came along is they, uh, if you had a lot of cushion, you'd be on top of that cushion, kind of like you're on stilts. And uh, the higher the stilt, the harder it was to stand. What Hoka did was carved out a piece. So while you can have a lot of cushion underneath you, you've got a lot of supportive material on the sides. That allows you to, uh, to be up high, but not, not be wobbly back and forth. And, and there's really no shoe in their road lineup that does that quite as well as the, uh, as the Bondi 5 specifically. One other great use for this Bondi is uh, it's really one of our favorite walking shoes for folks that aren't running but want a shoe that uh, lets their feet feel good all day long. This is the type of shoe you can put on in the morning, walk around all day at work, out on, the, out on a greenway, out in the neighborhood, and, uh, and really not take off till the end of your day and, and it's time to go to bed. We like both the really pillowy cushion for that. We have a lot of people that, that have some foot pain that they, uh, they just can't get up and walk. We think that this this extra cushion adds a bit of a margin for error for that. It just gives you kind of that, that little bit extra that you need to, to get up and go out and feel really good about it. Um, the other reason that we love the Bondi for walking is in walking, unlike running, in walking you're always going to hit your heel. Um, there's no good form walking that, that leads to a mid to four foot strike. And so when you're always going to hit your heel, what you'll notice with the Bondi is this nice bevel right to the back. And it's actually got a little bit of a bevel off to the side. So most people, uh, most people pronate just a little bit so they land in a supinated position which would land them on this outside corner and roll in on the shoe. So what the Bondi does, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on the camera, is it has kind of a double bevel. One coming this way so you can roll forward and one coming this way to roll your right towards the center of the shoe. And then obviously with the Bondi, you're gonna roll right off the front. So just a really nice heel to toe transition that, uh, that we think is, is how most people are walking and how you're gonna get the most comfort out of walking. So in addition to being a great long distance shoe, this is a really great walking shoe. Now one other thing that Hoka uh, does to differentiate itself from anyone else is they have what they call a meta rocker. And, and to put that in terms that, that we both understand and can enjoy, basically it just means the roll off the front of this shoe. Um, from right about here, we talk about your metatarsals. That's the bones where your toes start and your foot kind of ends. And your metatarsals are always gonna be, uh, the metatarsal ends are gonna be right about here. And this, and every hoka kind of rolls up from those metatarsals. If they, uh, if they go forward, that's uh, one type of rocker. If they go back, it's another. Mostly that's just marketing. What you're gonna wanna find is what type of rocker feels best on your foot. And the reason that you need a rocker on a shoe like this is that when you have a lot of cushion you lose some of that ability to toe off with your big toe and that's where you get your power when you run it's where your energy goes out so if you're gonna have 37 millimeters back here and 33 millimeters here at the metatarsals you're gonna want to rock that right up so that when by the time you get to your big toe you've got some good you know uh, quite a bit less cushion there where you can really push off with your toe and get some uh, get some uh, push off of it. So um, you're gonna wanna get, get some nice push off with your big toe right in here, which means you're gonna have less cushion. So that Meta Rocker, in addition to being very comfortable when you land, is, um, is, serves a purpose as far as getting you that energy into the shoe. So um, enough on the, on the bottom, you're gonna find this is really, this is what we call a pillowy ride. Uh, an important thing that we like to point out is whether you have a pillowy ride or a responsive ride, a springy type ride, generally you don't run any faster in one or the other except at the very extremes. If you're sprinting, you're gonna to wanna to have a very, very responsive ride, um, a responsive cushion, basically, that, that doesn't allow any compression. But beyond that, for normal humans, you're gonna run at about the same speed in a pillowy shoe as you are in a more responsive springy shoe. What it does do is it makes a heck of a lot of difference in how you feel when you're doing it. So I'm gonna put that on the personal preference side of the, of the equation, and this is on the pillowy side. Definitely, you're gonna sink in and uh, and really feel uh, comfortable in this shoe. We get to the top and uh, Hoka calls this a, I believe it's a pillow puff outer. Basically all it is, is it's, it's this engineered mesh that, that people have been introducing. So they don't have a lot of what we used to call overlays, little pieces of plastic going across the shoe. This engineered mesh is knitted in different thicknesses. Within the mesh itself, it provides the, the support that you need in a shoe. The puff pieces on the outside give a little bit of stability and make it a very consistent shoe. It's gonna retain its shape for a long time, which is what you want there. Also under turns, the combination of this upper and the engineered mesh upper 
and that that uh, bucket seat in the uh, in the sole mean that even though this is a very large shoe or you're high off the road, you can get a lot of uh, a very nice, stable, consistent landing in the Bondi. Last thing, last piece as far as the upper goes, what you're going to see here is this Bondi. This is uh, the the standard Bondi Five, nice and wide here around the toes, and then it does taper in. So if you have a a narrower foot or a foot that tapers towards the top, this is going to fit you really, really well. Hoka also makes a wide in this, which is going to add a couple millimeters on the outside, and it's going to uh, it's going to give you just a little bit more width as you go throughout the shoe. And so for folks with uh, a little bit more uh, substantial feet, they may want to give that a shot. A uh, good store will have that uh, in both the standard and the wide width. Of course, you can find every size and uh, and uh, width at the Ultra Running Company. So, so that's about it on the top. We really do like the way this fits. A little bit narrower here, holds your heel in, gives you that nice uh, consistent feel around your heel and your instep, widens out a little bit, and, uh, and then tapers in at the end. Uh, we find this fits pretty true to size. Some people have had to size up just because the taper is so dramatic on the back of this. That's a change from the Bondi 4, which was a little bit squarer in the end. Overall, we, uh, we've got really, really positive feelings. It's one of our favorite shoes. It's one of my favorite shoes for long runs, for recoveries, and uh, really fits a nice niche in, uh, in the store. Last thing I want to point out. The, uh, I talked a little bit earlier about the tread design. They've added more uh, hard, hard wearing carbon on the bottom and any of these black pieces you see are this, is this long wearing carbon. Uh, anything you see here that's, that's the white color is going to wear out a lot faster. This is basically just midsole material. It's not hard at all. It'll scuff off immediately. Um, we tend to get great mileage out of the Hoka's in general and the Bondi's a really high mileage shoe. We tend to say if, if you're getting let's say 400 miles out of a typical shoe, you should have no problem getting five to 600 out of, out of your typical Hoka. Um, they just do last, last uh, uh, quite a while with the extra cushion that doesn't compress as much and with this hard carbon. Now, on the Bondis up through the Bondi 4, what we saw was the, uh, the designs on the bottom, the tread designs, actually led to this soft and rubber really to wear off quickly. And we'd always encourage people, keep running, you've got a ton of miles left. We're not seeing that, that same uh, wear pattern on the Bondi 5. We're seeing it wear really consistently throughout the shoe. So for you mid-foot to four-foot strikers that used to have uh, portions of the Bondi wear out quickly on the bottom, you're really not gonna see that much on, uh, on the Bondi 5. This should be a nice long life shoe for you. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, we love the Bondi 5. It's a great shoe uh, for, for all of your longer distances. And, um, and uh, for anyone that just wants to get out there, walk around and uh, have a great time. So uh, come on in, try it out, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Learn to love to run.